All right, all right. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to apologize now. I'm sliding in sideways from a previous webinar, so we're just going to uh, going to jump right in. Connor, I'm how you doing today, buddy? Barney, better I be a twin. <laughs> and there it is. We're starting today with uh, with the corny stuff. So if we're going to start with corny, <laughs> let's just throw this uh, this slide deck up that uh, that is all about corny. Um, I, there aren't any maze puns in there though, so how can it be corny? Oh, listen to you. Listen to you. You're on fire today. All right. Let's uh let's see if I can manage to share this. Uh I come preloaded with jokes to make you wish you didn't know me. That's, this is uh, a true story. This is a true story. All right. <laughs> uh let's see. I think this is the first time I've ever had to present one of these on my fancy new monitor. And Your I, ninety-seven I, inch curved monitor. I, I bought, yeah, over over the over the holidays, I saw a really great steal on a on a on a um, fancy monitor, and now I realize that when I present in a webinar, I'm probably going to make everybody's eyes bleed as they try and see what's on a tiny little monitor. So, pardon me while I learn how to use my own technology while you guys wait. So, how are we doing today? By the way, feel free to hop in the Q and A and the chat. Hopefully, both of those are working. But if somebody would throw something in chat just to let us know that it's working. And I only see the uh, host and panelists option. Oh, I see. There we, go. there we go. Awesome. And two pluses for the maze joke. So you've got a, uh, this must, that must be a Finn partner who feels bad for you already. I think I, I recognize Brandon Hodgkin. Okay. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, welcome everybody. We wanted to pull everybody together today just to talk about the Fintegration. That is what I have nicknamed this. And that is probably the worst pun of them all, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with it. I didn't know today was bad pun day, but um, every day is bad pun day around Lifecycle Insights. That's, so, uh, I guess that's why it's, that's why we're working together. It's why we, it's why we work well together. So, um, you know, we've thought for a long time that security awareness data was important to, um, to MSPs and to their customers. Um, I just presented last week with Wes Spencer and, and, uh, and Will Brooks over at Fifth Wall for some Bering McKinley partners. And we had a huge conversation about a big chunk of what cyber insurance companies are looking for today is that everyone on the staff is getting trained and there, there's a lot of different components and pieces of that. We're not going to spend a lot of time digging into that part today, but I just think it's interesting, and I think it's uh, there's a huge uptick there. Um, before we dive too far in, I want to get the disclosure out there. I am an investor in Fin Security, so uh, anything you say on this uh, you hear on this webinar is likely very very biased, and I encourage you to reach out to Connor and make him prove it. So uh, there you go. There you go. That's, for, uh... that's the way. For everyone else on this call, Alex is uh, definitely not biased in any way, shape, or form. Um, if you've known Alex, you know uh, he gives everyone a fair shake. He tells you straight to your face whether or not he likes you or not, which is uh, more than most. So, yeah, yeah, definitely you unbiased. Um, and you've got folks offering to invest in the uh, in the Q and A. So, uh, so there you go. Um, oh, I can't even see the Q and A. Where's? Oh, you know what? How can I invest in Finn? Uh, there you go. Being a partner is the best investment you could give us. That is that man. That is the corporate answer right there. All right, Connor, <laughs> Connor Small, everyone. He's he's done for the day. I've been uh, trained by my lawyers very well. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you don't know us, uh, my name is Alex Farling. I am the, uh, the one of the co-founders and the channel chief at Lifecycle Insights. Um, I spent 16 and a half years as an MSP. Um, surprisingly enough, I was in Little Rinky Dink, Dover, Delaware. Um, Connor started Finn not too far from us. So, uh, and I won't, I won't even go there. I'm not going to bust your stones about it, but, uh, but we were never, we never had the privilege of being a fin partner mm. at my MSP, but I sold it in 2020 as Lifecycle Insights started really taking off and helping MSPs solve the problems that they experience around account management, VCIO, really strategic account management for their customers. So uh, that's kind of my story. Um, we'll, we'll step in and let Connor introduce himself. For all of you on this call, if we have time at the end, I'll tell you the story <laughs> as to why why Alex and I did not end up doing business together until we crossed paths many years later. Uh, I want to see if you um, can tell that story with a straight face, because then we'll be <laughs> not sure telling a true story. I always tell the truth, Alex. All right. So tell us a little bit about so, you and, and about Finn Security. So I'm Connor. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Finn. Uh, I actually started as a software developer building the product, and that ended quickly as we hired much smarter people doing much better things than I could possibly <laughs> do. Uh, as Alex and I joke about all the time. They never let um, me touch development. So, you know, that wasn't yeah, so the beginning. I guess we made more mistakes than y'all did then. Cause I, I was, yeah, I was, I just drew pictures with an Apple pencil and handed it to my developers. I'm like, can you make this? 
Oh, they loved you for that. I guarantee. <laughs> um, and uh, basically we built Finn because we saw a couple of problems that we wanted to solve. One of which was MSPs have a really specific use case for awareness training uh, and modern solutions required an incredible amount of time to manage. And more importantly, to build high quality programs required you to do everything on your own and teach yourself. So we decided to create a platform that gave you all your time back, made a lot of the decisions for you, and just created high quality awareness training programs that you didn't have to babysit, that you could set them up and forget about it. So yeah, it's like cool. you're it's like you're cheating on this next slide and, and telling it all early. But you know, the, oh. <laughs> the big reason that we built integrations into these platforms, um, and Finn included, was because collecting data to to go do account management and VCIO work, it requires pulling data out of a bunch of different systems, right? That's the problem we were trying to solve at Lifecycle. I, I knew um, I had a sign over my desk at my MSP that said, if you have to do it twice, automate it. And then QBR time came around and I exported reports out of 17 platforms and pasted them together and put them in Word docs and tried to make them pretty. And I'm not artistic. In fact, somebody else had to make these slides for us today because I am, I am the farthest thing from a dude who can deliver a pretty slide deck. Um, and so my customers got so my customers got a lot of information in a really ugly format that wasn't really well presented and tied together. And it just didn't tell the story that I wanted to tell when I went to meet with my clients. So we built this platform to go pull all those individual puzzle pieces from different places, plug them together and let CIOs and account managers go tell a, a compelling story to their customer so that the customer would come along for a journey of more security, more stability, more reliability in their networks and um, you know, really head in the right direction. Um, you guys kind of took a similar approach to that and us integrating with folks who just said, hey, we want to make it easy to manage. We want to make it simple. We want to make it automated. Um, talk a little bit about that because I used to spend probably an hour, a quarter, maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half, a quarter setting up um, phishing campaigns for my customers and making sure that all the information went out to the right people and making sure that we were following up on who was clicking links, like an hour and a half per customer per quarter. It was way yeah. too much. Yeah, it's way too much time. And um, something our customers didn't really value, right? They didn't, they, they, all they saw was us calling them and complaining when, when Sally or Billy clicked on a link. Yeah. Um, and even then, sometimes in, uh, in most cases, it's your allow listing is not done correctly. And, or, or as if happened in October, Microsoft releases a breaking change to the way Defender for 365 works and everybody starts complaining about it. Yeah. I'd be lying if I said we didn't, uh, we didn't consider more than once building a, 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 a Google, uh, it's not Google, Microsoft Outlook competitor, you know, top, top of a trillion dollar company. It would yeah, right, right. only do it on the side as a yeah. side thing, but we can um, project. Every time I met with an MSP, they described something very similar. It's like, describe to me an onboarding experience. What do you do when client asks you or a cyber insurance audit comes your way or your client has compliance issues with uh, insert any framework uh, that they need to abide by or that you decide to teach them? And they would describe this experience. Well, typically I manually pull the users in and then I select all the fishes and then I select all the training and then they would describe and then I start that again in a brand new client from scratch. I re-onboard the new users. I reselect all new training. I reselect all new phishing. And I was like, you well. Forgot, you forgot the part where since the last time we did this, we hired a new employee and we have to go back and make sure the help desk remembered to put him in my phishing solution. Right. Um, that and never happens. Correct. And it it's uh, it's just another task for someone to remember. And if you have to remember it, it's going to be forgotten. Yep. at the end of the day. So there's there's just way too much to, to remember, uh, yep. specifically talking with MSPs. It's like you got a million things going on. So our whole thought was these baby these dashboards are being completely babysat. Not only that, but you're repeating work over and over and over again. The exact same work. Select the exact same fishes. Select the exact same training material. And then even in the way it's delivered, you're like, the training material is not great. The phishing isn't really specific to this client. And I had to spend all the time selecting them. And so every time I heard uh, what is typically the newest technician at an MSP explain that process, because they're the ones getting hazed and having to do this. Piece. And they're the one that, yeah, they're the one that gets all the uh, the bottom feeder work, right? This isn't fun work. Correct. This is thing we should hand to an automaton and say, just make it go away. Yeah. Um, initially, we just started by asking questions, like painting a vision. I was like, hey, um, what would it look like if you know, when you created a campaign, you could share that as a template with all your clients and launch that whenever you wanted. What if you created a campaign that was based on topics for phishing and for training that were relevant to your client? Either you could identify them or answer some simple questionnaires. 
Like, what if you could create this continuous program that would alter itself based upon your client and you do it once and then you can share it with all your other partners if you want. Like, wow, that sounds amazing. Um, I would love, can I, can I, can I work with Finn? I was like, well, you know, we got to go build that. So I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm painting you the vision that I have. The uh, sales guy is out here selling it. It doesn't yeah, yeah. Even exist yet. That's never happened. <laughs> that was, uh, that was a few years ago. Uh, and we, we, we have a long way to go. We think there's awesome opportunity in this industry, but we have come an incredible uh, way so far. And we have helped out an enormous amount of more MSPs than I ever thought we'd have, yeah. uh, have come on board and are awesome people uh, so far. Yeah. Uh, but that was it. I just, I asked the, who's doing this work. You know, typically uh, if you're, if you're an MSP and you're on the call doing this, you should reconsider changing things. But if you're like the the CEO or the owner and you're um, not getting the input from the people who are doing the work, how much time's going into it, um, the frequency with which they have to do this, the friction points that it creates with your client. Because one thing that's really unique about awareness training it's one of the only cybersecurity tools that is completely in front of your client at all times. Mm -hmm. So it has the tendency to cause issues, uh, whether that's like you had mentioned earlier, oh, these people click these links. And then of course you ask them and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, so there are really a lot of tools that we needed to give MSPs so that they didn't need to come back, in, back into the platform and go talk to the client and back in the platform. We needed everything to be distributed to the client that was needed and everything distributed to the admins of the platform that was needed automatically. And that's, yeah. that's where we started is what's, what sucks about what you're currently using. Why don't you like that? Yeah. How could we make it a tiny bit better? How should this work? We In fact, a, one of the first conversations I ever had with Connor was we have to get the word sucks out of your sales pitch, but that's, a whole I remember thing. that that was at yeah. right of boom last year. <laughs> Uh, but you know, it's, it's interesting to hear the way you guys talk about security awareness training. And I really like the story. I like where you guys come from because we're kind of on the same path, right? We're really trying to automate what should be automated, automate the simple and only add humans where there has to be a complex thing done, or there has right. to be something that automation can't handle. And to that end, when we started bringing security awareness products into our tool, we have two different reports for, for our security awareness products. They have one that's dedicated to them. We'll show it to you guys on the next slide. But then we have one that is um, that is a combined user story. And as a sales guy and, and who just happened to know a little something about technology and was able to fake it long enough for somebody to buy my MSP, um, you know, I, I understood the value of telling a story. So when we talk about user security, but we, we tell a whole story. We pull in data from your Microsoft 365. We pull in data from your ConnectWise or your, your uh, Hudu or your Ninja or whatever it is. And we, we pull data about your users from all those tools, including that security awareness training tool. So when we sit down with an MSP, the one time I'm sure I can get everybody to laugh on a demo is when I pull up this report and go, here's Bob. Bob works in accounting. Bob clicked on 27% of his phishing units. Bob is also really obnoxious and won't let the, the support staff put MFA on his phone. So you see here, MFA is disabled on his Microsoft 365. Bob is the one who's going to get you breached. So Mr. Customer, either you need to let me take away Bob's keyboard or you need to let me, you know, we need to talk about buying some of the other product services security suite that we offer. Um, you know, we need to, we need to have some of these other discussions. Everybody laughs because they know they won't, you know, their customer would never let me take away Bob's keyboard. I really want the customer to go, yeah, you can have Bob's keyboard. He's a worthless, worthless piece of crap, but nobody's ever said, that, right? Um, so, so it's a, but it's a real conversation. And that's where we really did dive into what are the individual data points that we can start to pluck that, pulled together, tell that bigger story. And we're really big on that at Lifecycle Insights. And that's why, you know, you'll see, you'll see the Fin integration has its own report, but it also lives in our bigger um, user report where we can show, you know, their likelihood to click on a fish plus their, their use of MFA or their last login dates to 365 and some other things that show whether or not there's somebody who we should be worried about. So as promised, here's our, here's our security awareness report from Fin. Notice it is super simple. Right, you can go into Fin and get more detailed reporting. You can you can dig into reports all day long. Um, when we go to present to a client, which is really Lifecycle Insights' uh, goal in all of this, look, we just want the high level items. We want to know, you know, who's who's likely to click on a fish, um, who's actually completed their their training, and then we put it in red, yellow, and green, so it's so simple even a, a C level executive could understand it. And we put it back in front of your customer. Right? Um, I always joke that you know we've got the stoplight because every three year old and most C level executives understand what it means. Um, <laughs> so, so you know the stoplight reporting makes it super simple. So now we know there's two users in this particular organization that have some work to do. When we have our quarterly business review, we're going to mention that and and we're going to kind of have that conversation. Um, 
go ahead and uh, what are your thoughts on this on, on the reporting uh i think this is amazing so there's a few what, what i've talked about so far with finn is the msp use case that we really honed in on and really want to serve uh very well our overarching goal is a concept i call human vulnerability management which is actually getting to why are humans bad at understanding how they're vulnerable to social engineering right every single uh reddit reddit's recent breach like last week was announced was a result of targeted phishing yeah so it's like okay well one if you're an employee of reddit you should be ready to fend off the trolls on your own so you should expect someone's going to be that. good at it actually yeah there's, there's a lot of trolls at reddit correct um but why is it that people are notoriously i mean I know the answer is that human behavior is incredibly complex. It's very hard to change and even understand. Uh, I so thought it's it was definitely... easier than that. I thought it was just ego. <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a lot of people who are completely unaware of how they're vulnerable. And um, a concept that I've started to push out there is, you know, the people you work with, life events, political events, geographic events, like all of these fact change the way somebody's vulnerable to social engineering. So if I send... Well, and the things that they're passionate about, right? Correct. Every human's unique. Why? Why is everyone being treated the same? Uh, yeah. Is a is a question I have, and it's I know the answer now after trying to do this for three years. Now it's it's incredibly difficult, um, and I don't think it's a process that'll be ever complete. But one thing that I've tried to get the industry away from is uh, these metrics are awesome, but we have, uh, but sometimes they're interpreted incorrectly. Mm -hmm. So, like we have companies that if people click on fishes, they're um their compensation changes I'm like oh we should not be doing that it's, you know what you just incentivize that your sock is going to get every email that that person ever gets from here on out so they're never clicking on another thing again even if it's completely real and so there are a lot of ways that not only us as the industry are teaching y'all to incentivize improperly but that have just that are just in existence right now that we're trying to change as well yeah, no, it's a, and that's super important. I love the way you're talking about shifting an industry, right? Because this is, you're in an interesting spot in this space. When we sat down and looked at integrations, we looked around and went, holy crap, there's 115 or 120 security awareness training platforms vying for the attention of MSPs. Um, there's a lot of them in this space. So you didn't pick a a, a, a blue ocean here, right? No. You're, but but you're you're looking at a space that really hasn't moved in a decade, right? We're still trying to do this the same way we did it a decade ago. And the world is way different, right? We know very well that if you sent Alex an email um, advertising a Lego, uh, Star Wars Lego sale, um, yeah. I'm probably going to click the link, right? So you, you've you've kind of accepted some of that. Or if you, uh, if you email, I know Kelvin's not on here, which is why I'm going to say this now. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to clip this and send it to him and uh, okay. he'll deny it up and down the if you send Kelvin a, uh, a fish pretending to be Ray Orsini, uh, needing you to do something for him, it'll also work. <laughs> it'll work every time. Yeah, Kelvin so, But we all have those, um, and some of that's emotional. Some of that is just yeah. that we that we're trustworthy, or we want to believe that who we're talking to is trustworthy. Um, you know, some of that's just that right. we're good humans, and we want to believe everybody else is. Yes, um, and uh, initially we had a lot of companies say, "Well, I have web filters, I have secure mode gateways, like this is fine," and I've talked with an incredible amount of companies where their exact statement is if we make it 10 times harder to get a false positive or a, a false negative, we just see 10 times more traffic come through. It's like the number of, of things that end up getting to an employee don't really change, really change. because yeah. there are nation states that are trying to fish American companies. In well, and it's so cheap for the bad guys to just roll more spam, right? There's really yeah. no cost to it at the end of the day. Yeah, there's there's two strategies. There's the carpet bombing and then there's the surgical strike. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The carpet bombing works just by ratcheting up the amount of carpet bombing you do. The surgical strike works by if I go to LinkedIn and I get a free account for a tool like Seamless where I'm getting people's actual contact information at your company, I could fish them pretending to be a person at a vendor that I know you use because there's also tools that'll tell me which vendors you use. Right. So it's like all of this information is quote unquote publicly available. Yeah. Um, so What's really needed is employees that are incredibly prepared that the red light goes off in their head, the warning signs go off before they do something uh, unfortunate, which is probably take the business down for a few days, at least if yep. you don't have proper backups and whatnot. Yeah. So somebody asked a question, will, will this be included in the report builder with, uh, with not just the full report, but an additional page with the overview and statistics? So at, at the original release, this is the one report along with the user report 
that will be in Report Builder. So you'll have two different places you can present the detail or the information. Um, if there's more detail that you want above and beyond what you see on this report, do me a favor. Um, you know, set up the integration, go go play with it a little bit. And if you don't feel like you have all the data that you want, reach out to our support, mark something up, mock something up, show us exactly how you'd want to see that data. Um, I won't promise that we'll build it. In fact, we'll probably go back to Connor and talk to him first and say, if folks are presenting this data this way, are they are they really achieving the goal that they want? And I don't say that to be arrogant, but as MSPs, we want to we want to present all the information to our customers. And sometimes we just overwhelm them. And we try really hard at Lifecycle Insights to not give you guys the pointy stick to go poke your own eye out. Um, you know, we really want to make sure that we lead with education, which is Finn's kind of goal, and and make sure that we're giving you the detail, the data that you need to have that conversation with your customer. That said, um, we don't expect to ever show you all the detail that you can get in Finn's reporting. There may be a time when tactically you have to go talk to your point of contact at your customer and you go back and dig into Finn to go have that conversation outside of a yeah. GDR. We're always going to focus on that high level data that moves the needle in a really strategic conversation with the majority of the C-level executives. So I hope that answers your question. I think I understood it right. If I didn't, feel free to, to follow up and, uh, and continue to poke at us. For that anonymous attendee, yeah. we do have automated reports that are almost certainly uh, exactly what you're looking for and talking about for um, from lifecycle here. It has training performance, fishing performance, uh, and then we don't call them the stragglers, but um, people to watch is what we call them. It's somebody that your client, the managers of your client need to get in front of, and you can set that up to a list of admins or a list of report viewers on a weekly or a monthly basis. And it's updated your account managers uh, at yeah. your organization, right? We can send them to the MSP yep. account manager and to the point of contact at the customer. Yeah, for uh, for some of the savvier um, uh, partners of ours, they've actually added as a report viewer the uh, email address in their PSA for that partner. So it automatically emails them with the report attached, creates a ticket, and um, will interpret it. You know, if they're using a tool like Roost or something else like yeah. that, it'll automatically interpret the ticket and do a whole bunch of cool stuff with it. Awesome. And they've set that up to be completely automated. Awesome. And I've got I've got a. Uh a wonderful partner pinging me on the side to make sure we remember to record. So that is awesome. I, I love our partners. So wonderful. We are, it is recording. I, I saw it. a little red dot I somewhere. Yeah. Down here. Yep. So I don't know why everybody on the call is not seeing it, but um, so we're going to pivot now kind of out of the report that you get out of the life cycle. And we're actually going to talk about some of the reporting that's in the Finn platform. So I get out over my skis pretty quickly here. Admittedly, we use Finn at Lifecycle Insights. It is our, our uh, security awareness training platform. And I don't pay a lot of attention to it because our guys are pretty good. Um, they're, they're pretty distrustful or they hate email and they just don't click on anything in any email. Um, but um, you know, there's only one or two of us here in the organization that have ever clicked on anything. And I stand by my story that I only clicked on it to test it when we were mm. sending it up, but we'll see. If, you know, if I had a nickel for every time somebody <laughs> said that to me. I'd, uh, I'd be a rich person, Alex. Yeah, there you sure. go. There you go. Um, so what I wanted to show you all here today, this is what's actually available in the portal. This is not the automated reports that are generated from our side. Um, if you want an example of that, we actually have a bunch of different examples in our knowledge base. Uh, that's You don't need to log into that or anything. So this is actually kind of the data that is then collated and put into LCI, which is what I wanted to show you. So specifically for the training courses. So this is one training course. I totally forget which name it was, but um, we wanted to make it as easy to use as possible. So it's real simple. It's red or green. Do you have users in it? How many of them are completing it? Uh, and then if I would have right there, you see my email at the, at the bottom there. If I would have completed that, or if I would have answered the questions and got them wrong, uh, then you would see a score there, or you'd say passed. Uh, and then you'd have the ability to either reset that training, resend a reminder, uh, or uh, delete that user from that course. So one thing um, uh, one thing we wanted to do was employees don't engage with awareness training when it's long and arduous. Um, more so when it's not when it's long and arduous. So every every training campaign we set up, you can set it up where everything gets delivered immediately and they have to take hours of training at a time. You're more than capable of doing that. However, what we've noticed through all of our partners is if we space it out, if we send videos, uh, let's say once a month, uh, that's no more than five minutes long. And it's actually relevant to their job based upon the topics we've identified at the beginning. The participation goes way up. So it's like if an employee is telling you or employees telling your client, I don't have five minutes to do this. It's like, who are you lying to? 
Yeah. Because uh, you do have five minutes. And in most cases, it is required either by cyber insurance or some other kind of regulation that you typically but, have. To but the inverse of that is we give them a half hour or an hour training. And what we find is, you know, later on, there's texting people pictures of the boring slide deck that they're that they're uh, being forced to look, stare at and yeah. not paying attention to it and goofing around on their phone or doing something else while it's happening in the background. Right. Because these long immersive trainings just don't work. Right. Yep. Every employee I've ever talked to. Uh, and I went to actually, I used to talk with every employee that was using our platform uh, as often as I could, if I got permission from the MSP, I would ask them, what do you typically do when your training comes on previously? And they're like, well, I move into my second monitor. I pet my dog, play with my cat, talk to my kids, say hi to my wife, my husband, whatever it is. And then and I come back and I answer the question. The <laughs> yeah. And then I guess at the answers, it's like, okay, two things happened. You're not going to remember that information. There was no information that you needed to remember now. And the second is your company paid for that. Yeah. So it's like you paid for all the results you didn't get. And yeah. you brought up some, there's there's a, a 10 ton gorilla in the space. I won't name their names. But basically, the, one of the reasons I started looking into this problem is um, the result breaches as a result of a human making a mistake, whether that was intentionally or unintentionally making the mistake, uh, was going up. The frequency with which that was the reason a breach occurred yeah. is th that's the line. I've, I've looked at the research yep. and the profit and the revenue that existing awareness training companies were making was also going way up. I was like, how is it that every company in the entire industry is getting used more on a regular basis every single year for the last two decades? And the problem has gotten way worse every year for the last two decades. I didn't get it. So I was like, okay, something, something has to be incorrect. And, the company uh, that's failing is, is making more money every single day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's about that's about how this works. So, so as we as we start to look at you know what we're doing different, um, you know, some of the reporting is really going to become um, some of it's going to be important to the MSP. Some of it's going to be important to one or two people at the client uh, at the high level for the entire C level team, right? We need to be able to give them really big high numbers to say uh, high level numbers to say, hey, we're doing the work, we're seeing the result. Um, yeah. What are you seeing as far as the reporting that is um, properly used by MSPs and how, how do they put it in front of their client in a way that makes sense? Um, the Honestly, the best thing we've done for automated reporting that has worked is we created a concept called users to watch where it's real simple. It's if people are getting fished in any capacity uh, and if or if they're not completing their training in a timely manner, they end up on a table that gets attached to every, that you can decide to attach to every report. Uh, and it's called users to watch. And it's simply when you're adding report viewers in the, in the, in the um, uh, uh, portal, it's either a manager at your client or it's your own admins, right? Your own people, your account yep. managers, like yep. as you had mentioned. Okay. So now we've just identified who are the seven people that month for that organization that somebody needs to get in front of. They need to, Re uh, they need to restate, hey, it's really important you keep up to date with your training or, hey, you got fished. Can we go over that? And um, you'll see an example of this later on in the presentation. I think it's next slide. You can actually dive into, yeah, on an individual basis here. So on the right, we have uh, all of the fishes and the fishing performance. And on the left, we have, I've clicked on one of those users and I can see what was their actual performance. And yeah. then you can actually go through, okay, this was the exact fish. What did you do? Oh, I wish I would have brought a, an example of a learning moment in here. Um, one thing that makes us different straight off the bat, when a user gets fished, it's not a video that they get. It's not a, a web page they get brought to. It is a handheld tour of that exact fish that got them. And it teaches them everything our platform had to do to alter that fish to get them. I just so want to, I, I want to take a step back before you get too far off of it and make sure everybody heard the language you used there. This is a learning moment, right? Yeah, it's a there's learning nothing, moment. There's nothing that doesn't sound penalizing. It doesn't no. sound degrading, right? We're not we're not beating up on the user. We're not tearing up on the user. We're trying to educate them to allow them to move forward. And I think that's a, a difference to me in just the mentality at the top, at the leadership level of your company yeah. uh, that flows through and is, is evident in the product itself. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's a concept that Wes and I talk about all the time that he saw when he was a C, uh, CISO at a bank is when you punish your, when you when you unintentionally or intentionally punish your users their performance absolutely plummets 
Yeah. Uh, and so what we needed to do is listen, um, I studied math. I say this story all the time. I studied math in college. I know what it's like to talk with a group of people about something they fundamentally don't care about. I was super excited about math. Nobody <laughs> else was. Nobody else. Nobody else was. Yeah. And um, I see that I saw the same thing happening with cybersecurity is your employees, they want to show up, they want to do a good job, they want to do great work, and they want to be safe while they do it. Anything that you put on top of that, any punishment, any type of performance standard when it comes to their security just takes away from that, from their ability to do both of those things. And so we, we've been asked, uh, can you reassign more fishes or can you reassign additional training for people that get fished? And the answer is absolutely not. We and it's, could, but we, we could, right? We could, but where, what we, what I really saw as an opportunity in this industry specifically was, let's take away all the management so that you don't spend time doing it. But secondarily, that gives us an opportunity to put in place what we believe to be the right principles for actually creating behavior change. Mm -hmm. uh, and and a lot of that boils up to exactly what you just mentioned: is every single thing we do for a user is how can we make them feel more supported. Uh, when we give them more training or when we fish them in a different way. So whenever they fail a fish, it's not a, like, a, it's not a punishment. It's not a, your manager's going to be in touch with you. Good luck. It's, um, <laughs> hey, yeah. we got you. Our platform is designed to get you. Right. So let's go through how we did that. And we teach them, open up the sending information. Look at the link. Okay, you should have noticed this is domain impersonation. All of the things that we as professionals do most of the time, right? Uh, whatever. I'm a, I'm a C-suite now, so maybe I'm losing my touch, you know, but uh, all the things that we do. Don't worry. We'll give you a color-coded report that even you can. Read. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, just I'm, I'm actually red and green color ones. So <laughs> the stoplight analogy is, you know, a little lost painful. on you. Yeah. That, that accounts for like 3% of the C-suite that can't read these reports. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I guess um, it was uh, what we wanted to make sure was happening was that people felt supported and that we could help we could make the good decisions for the MSP. It's like, you don't need to be, you're asked to be experts in everything, but you shouldn't be. You well, should be working. Worse. Yeah. Nothing's worse than that. Five minutes, 10 minutes, hour, day, week, whatever time you spend waiting, wondering, oh crap, what's going to happen to me since I clicked on that link, right? Everybody's had that. I know there's an uncomfortable conversation coming from management. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm going to get fired. And as MSPs, you guys have all had it. One of your customers emailed you and went, we need to talk. Right. Or I need my, my I need my my cousin's nephew's uncle's kid tells me that I should have all the passwords for all my devices. Right. And immediately your heart just sinks. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what happens to an employee when they click on a fish and they go, oh, shit. Like, what's going to happen? Am yeah. I going to get fired? Am I going to get yelled at? Like, what's and that is so counterproductive to training and education. And I think you guys are, are are really attuned to that. I think you're aware of that. And I think that's one of the things that really attracts me to the platform and to the team you've got over there because I think you guys are building the right things. Yeah. With the um, right intention. Turns out when you yeah. when you ask people how they'd like to be treated and how we can help them solve their problems, so they'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you should probably just listen. Yeah. Well, you know, we had a really small MSP on a Lifecycle Insights onboarding call last week. And he says, man, I just can't tell you how grateful I am for all the time you guys have spent with me. And I know I'm small and, you know, I just, I'm just really surprised that you guys spend time with us like this. And he said, you know, man, there's only one way I'm aware of to make raving fans out of customers and that's to give them what they want and what they need. So, you know, you and I kind of agree on that, on that standpoint. So, um, you know, with that, I think we've covered everything. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about that we haven't touched on today? Um, we'll get into where you can uh, learn more information about Finn and Lifecycle Insights, but uh, anything we need um, to do before that? I don't think so. We're going to be right. at a ton of shows this year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right one thing we're known week. for, I'll, yeah, I'll show you this. We are known for high quality t-shirts. So this is a Jaws themed t-shirt. We uh, I have a really, high, I should have worn my Finn t-shirt. I have one that I love. I like the Matrix one better than that, but they do so have do yeah. t-shirts. Yeah. My, the Matrix one, I think you need to reboot that one and bring it back. Um, yeah, one of the um, one of the reasons we're so successful is because our dedication to the community, uh, and that's not just lip service that we pay. That's where we started. Is I'm involved personally in all of the slacks and the reddits and the discords and MSP Geek, and I'm at the conferences um, as much as I can be. I can't be everywhere at once, but there's only 150 conferences this year. I don't know why you can't be at all. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm getting married, so congratulations. Two weeks. There's two yeah. weeks out of the year I can't do anything. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh -huh. And so, um, 
if, if somebody wants to learn more about Finn, number one, they will be at Rite of Boom next week. Yep. He'll also be simultaneously at uh, Evolve. Likewise, Evolve. So will Lifecycle Insights. We'll both be at both of those places. So we'll be hanging out together. If you guys want to want to experience the Fintigration, I still love that name. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that forever. Um, uh, and uh, you know, if you guys want to check it out, if you use one product or the other, great. We'll show you where to go find the other one. Uh, both of us have uh, you know free sign or uh, sign up pages up here. Lifecycle gives you a 30 day free trial. Um, we are month to month, no commitment. So we try and make it easy and frictionless for you to do business with us. I recognize a lot of names in the chat. So I'm guessing most of you don't apply to the uh, to the um, 50% off your first two months. But if you are a new partner to Lifecycle Insights, you'll get a 30 day free trial and then 50% off the first two months after that. Um, and then if you're if you're not a Fin partner already, um, fintech.io slash pricing. So yeah. wonderful to see another uh, vendor out here in the space that puts their pricing front and center. Uh, that lets the customer see it um, where, you know, we try and be as transparent as possible. We actually don't have a, well, we don't go direct. Uh, that's the first thing, but we don't have direct pricing there because it caused problems once. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I see writing on walls here. Um, but if you go to this page, uh, it will tell you, you can reach out and we will send you the pricing. You're not going to get enrolled in marketing emails. There's even a link to a 35 minute demo that I filmed myself. You don't even need to get conversation with us if you if you're not interested at this time and you just want to see what we're doing and why we're doing it. That is a 35 minute demo of everything. Nice. And yes, there are no there's nothing hidden. So everyone can see. A lot of people are not upset, but they're like, "Wow, you would you'd put everything out there." It's like, yeah. just watch it. Don't waste my time. Don't waste your time. Just just get a demo. Yeah. Um, for those of you in the chat, if you're I see a bunch of existing partners, uh, I'd love to see. If you have any advice for the other folks here, if you could put that in the chat for them and for people who aren't current partners of ours, which I don't recognize a lot of the names, uh, ask questions. We are quite possibly one of the most open and honest and transparent companies you would ever work with. And we're always, always, always happy to chat uh, and give you honest feedback. Um, but yeah, we do have month to month options. That was a big thing for MSPs. Uh, we do offer volume and annual discounts there. Cool, cool, awesome. So um, I'm just responding to a, to a quick uh, uh, question, but the question is how much of the of the FIN reporting will be coming into Lifecycle Insights, even as a VCIO, we like to see that information, even if uh, we don't present it to the company. Um, you know, we really, we see Lifecycle Insights as a client-facing reporting package. So we really are a business analytics tool that takes data out of multiple systems, builds a client presentation and puts it back in front of your customer. So the information that we present will most likely be what we expect or that we pull will most likely be what we expect you to send to your customer and it'll have that slant to it. That's not to say you can't give yourself the, you know, set up the automated reporting, have it email you, have it email your ticket system. You know, we always had our, um, of these kind of reports, go to our ticket system and land on, a, on an account management board. And then the account managers would be forced to look at it and see it every month. And I would know as, a, as the owner that they had done it because the tickets got closed. Right. So there's a lot of ways you can put that information in front of yourself on a regular basis. Um, importing it into Lifecycle Insights is just going to cause a mess and confusion if we try and pull everything that they do. But if there's a client facing piece of data that you want that we don't have, um, by all means, reach out to us. Um, support at lifecycleinsights.io. Um, tell us what you need and why you need it. And we'll probably, uh, you know, probably go meet you in the middle there and, and, and build what you need to have. So um, that's that's our two cents there. Now, if you want to reach out to either one of us, uh, don't hesitate. I, I meant to put, did I put our LinkedIn's on the beginning? I did. So this is where you can find information about us, but let's run back to the beginning. If you guys want to ch chat with either one of us, Connor and I are both, uh, I didn't put our LinkedIn's on these slides. I'm usually pretty good about that. Um, but if you guys want to want to reach out to either one of us, don't hesitate. Um, you know, we love to chat with partners. We love to have conversations with you guys. So um, as this is, the Zoom is going, I just had a customer call me about an email and said, oh, that Finn training would have present prevented. Coincidentally, mm. it's an easy pitch. It's an easy pitch today. Um, that probably would have been a tougher pitch yesterday, but but that's awesome, Jacob. I, I we yeah. would love to hear that, uh, that at least you have the right tools in your toolbox. Yeah. One thing I'm seeing a lot of, not only for you, Jacob, but for others, is um, this is a problem. People making mistakes is a problem that is very easy to communicate to your clients, and it's something they're already aware of. So we've seen a huge uptick in interest. And when we ask MSP, why are you reaching out now? How did you hear about us? They're like, my client handed me a cyber insurance questionnaire or asked me a question about 800-171 or CMMC regulations, whatever it is. And they're like, 
And I didn't have an answer. And so here we are. I need something in three days. It's like, oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess we could help. Months of payments. Yeah, I've heard that too. Um, we we worked with a partner that several months before they started working with us lost like 40 grand uh, to somebody new. I talked about the scenario earlier. Uh, third, somebody impersonated a third party vendor that they would work with, said, hey, can you change the bank account information? You know, it's a tale as old as time. Yeah. And uh, they did, sent 40 grand and then they caught it um, after it was way too late and the money was already gone. So, yeah. No, there's a lot of Saudi princes out there making out pretty well on this deal. Yeah, that's um, that's what people uh, people think it's going to be the the Saudi prince or the the, the scam. And in reality, what what good social engineering? They've gotten like, better at it, right? Yeah, they, they've started to learn what works. They've started to learn what we fall for, um, and they're really making a push towards uh, correct. You know, towards the things that work and yeah. as we get better as we I, I liken it to the cartoon where the guy's putting his fingers in the holes in the dam right as we yeah. put our finger in one hole water they'll, they'll start to do they'll, they'll figure out another one that works and they'll move yeah. that. And that's why continuous training is the ask that the insurance companies have right it's not annual training it's continuous training to make sure that we're doing more than just once a year uh, you know check a box on a five minute video and pretend like we actually trained our team yep absolutely and um I, t- I told him I tell the story. You want me to tell the story or hold? No, you can those? tell the story. Go ahead. You can tell your version. Of, All right, the my version. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. there's there's my truth and your truth now. In this <laughs> one. Got it. Got it. Um, so for everyone listening, uh, I'm from Delaware. Alex is from Delaware. I grew up in a town called Middletown, and Alex was in Dover at the time. That was where his MSP was, which is 30 minutes, 20 minutes on a good day. Probably 30. Yeah. 30 minutes away from where I live. 30 minutes and a two dollar toll. Yeah. So so we got started. Uh, at Finn by I went to the CRN 250 500 you know all the lists that get and uh, Alex was on one of those lists somewhere I don't know I thought there was an MSP in Dover Delaware on those lists I was like oh I'm from Delaware this guy's from Delaware I can I can make a set we're Delaware boys we help each other out and um so I call Alex I cold called a bunch of MSP Alex was one of them and he never picks up my call not once doesn't pick up the call doesn't return voicemail nothing and <laughs> I already know you're getting ready to respond. Yeah, you can't tell the story with a straight face. So I know you're, I know you're, I, it's, the story gets better every time because the CRN thing, that's new. Um, you didn't tell that part. I of got the, story the list from time. somewhere. And it was one have, of them. You're going to have to go find it because I can promise you we were never on a CRN list. We never did any of the top 50, top 501, top any of that crap because I'm not a big believer in uh, in, in buying awards <laughs> for, for marketing. But, uh, you know, you, and, you, need, you can work on this story and keep talking. I got it. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, Never, never, never picked up the phone. Uh, and then several months later, maybe like six months later, I'm at a conference. Was it right a boom? That's when we first met. Yeah. And um, you come up to the booth and you say something like, so people told me you, y'all are from Delaware and we should talk or something like that. It's like, you're the only other people from Delaware. I was like, yeah, uh, we're from Delaware. Everyone at our booth's from Delaware. I make a joke all the time. So there's four people at this conference from Delaware and they're all at my booth right now. <laughs> and uh so then Alex goes, yeah, I used to own an MSP in Dover. I was like, huh, you're that guy. <laughs> you're the guy that never called me back. The story gets better every time. Never helped me out. Yeah. And uh, Alex, of course, to this day, as you can see, swears up and down. I never called him and he never, never ignored our phone calls. And, I, uh, oh, I, I never ignored your phone call. You're right. Uh, from that point forward. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> you never ignored the phone call. So if, yeah. if any of you have, have ever been through Delaware and if you blinked, you missed it. But Delaware is a, a state Very of less strong. than a million people. And there's a lot of pride in supporting local Delaware business. So had I known you were you were there and that you existed and that you were a Delaware business, I'm pretty sure we would have done business together. But long story short, you're stuck with me now. Um, yeah. Happy to be a, a, a Finn partner. Um, happy to be integrated with you guys. Loving this. So you guys, if you have any questions, um, thanks for hanging out with us for 45 minutes here today. We really do appreciate it. We'd love for you to check out the integration, give it a try. Um, you know, we'll we'll make sure we reduce any of the friction that it takes to get you guys up and running. Don't hesitate to reach out to either one of us directly. We're happy to help. Always happy to help. Thanks for having yeah. me on, Alex. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. See y'all.